Hey, what's up? Welcome or welcome back if you're new. My name is Lena, aka From Be Fit. I'm an online weight loss coach who's dedicated to calling out all the BS in the fitness industry and providing you with accurate fitness nutrition and weight loss information. Today, that was a mouthful, I am sharing my top favorite, personal favorite, low calorie slash high protein drinks that will just help you stay on track with your diet for weight loss. Whether it's satisfying a craving, you'll have to decide if any of these are capable of doing that because I think sometimes having the thing is better than having an alternative sometimes, or you're just trying to make your weight loss diet more fun, I think these will really help. And a disclaimer, I am not a chef. I'm not very good in the kitchen. I created all of these after trial and error of finding a drink that I really liked, but was relatively high calorie. And just wondering if I could play around in the kitchen and come up with something that was a little fewer calories so I could enjoy it on a more regular basis. Also to save money, because your girl likes to be frugal as much as I can. There are six drinks that I'm gonna cover in this video. A slushy, like, I worked so hard to get the texture just right to match like a slushy that you would get, like the movie theater or a gas station. You know what I'm talking about. And per like, not to brag, but I nailed it. An iced chai latte that's, in my opinion, very similar to what you could get from Starbucks. A Thai tea latte, which I tried to make it as authentic as possible. And also disclaimer, these, some of these are cultural, so I'm not trying to like claim that any of these are authentic. They are inspired by the originals, including the next drink, which is a protein boba milk tea, and then a root beer float, and protein pink lemonade. So that's what we're covering. And rather than giving you the exact recipes in this video and like showing you how I made them. This is gonna be me sharing the ingredients and what I like about it and how I came up with it and the calories and I'll share as much of the actual quantities in the description of this video as I can. But shout out to people who create recipes and film themselves making them because it's not easy. Also the overhead light in my kitchen went out literally the day after I started trying to document all of these drinks. So we've gone quite a while with just no light in our kitchen. So that's fun. But I also will have, if you don't wanna come back to this video, you don't wanna read the description, I created a downloadable PDF that has all the ingredients with links to the ingredients if you need help finding them, because some of them you can't really find in the grocery store easily. The exact quantities that I use for my recipes, the nutrition facts, meaning calories, protein, carbs, fat, and added sugar. I calculated all of that for all of these recipes and like the exact directions. Here's an example of what the PDF looks like. And you'll have one of these pages for every single drink. The first thing that I wanna touch on before we jump into the actual drinks, feel free to skip this if you want. The chapters will be like on the video or I'll put a timestamp here of when I actually start talking about the drinks, but I wanted to talk about artificial sweeteners, natural sweeteners, sugar alcohols, all of those things, because I do use quite a few of those products in these drink recipes. There are some myths associated with these types of ingredients that I wanna debunk, and then also just share some things that maybe you should actually be cautious about when using ingredients like this. So the first myth is that even though these ingredients have little to no calories, it's tricking your body into thinking that you're still having regular sugar, which causes an insulin reaction, which causes you to store fat. That is just not true. Your body cannot be tricked just because something tastes sweet. That doesn't make sense. The second myth is that artificial sweeteners in particular are gonna cause like really intense, serious health implications like cancer. Um, I can't remember everything that people are claiming these days, but any studies that have proven like negative health effects that are that serious have been like rat studies and they've been consuming such a high quantity of that ingredient relative to their body weight, like the rat's body weight, that that's not something a human is likely to ever reach. So I feel confident enough having these products that they're not gonna have those serious health effects, especially because I'm not having them every single day. So those are the myths, but I also think that there is some caution to be had with some of these ingredients. I put these into three different categories, artificial sweeteners, natural sweeteners, and sugar alcohols. Artificial sweeteners are gonna be the things like sucralose, aspartame, and acesulfame potassium. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. These are just made like in a lab. They don't come from nature. Then you're gonna have natural sweeteners, things like allulose, monk fruit, stevia, 
things like that they're derived from plants. And then your sugar alcohols are gonna be things like erythritol. I'm gonna link a blog post from Lacey Dunn, my favorite registered dietitian. I mentioned her a lot in my like health video that I made recently because I'm working with her to resolve my health issues. But she has a great blog post talking about the effects that all of these different sweeteners can have on your gut. So that is the caution to be had, at least in my opinion. I personally do notice really negative effects if I have too much artificial sweeteners or erythritol like sugar alcohols. Natural sweeteners, I tend to be totally fine with and I don't notice any digestive distress. And this is gonna be person and dose specific. So you may be somebody who's not really affected very much by any of these, like you can have them and not be bothered digestively, or you may be really sensitive like me. So if I have too much of the artificial sweeteners, I like TMI on the toilet, crazy stomach cramps, diarrhea, like it's not a fun time. I also feel like I do get headaches, but that's anecdotal. Now I can have a diet soda, even one diet soda every single day and not have any of these negative digestive effects. But if I have a large quantity, like for example, if there's a candy that's made with it in large amounts, the one time I had the absolute worst experience was I went to this Italian ice restaurant next to my work when I lived in Arizona, in Phoenix, and they had a sugar-free option. I was like, why not? And let me tell you, I almost went to the hospital. I was on the toilet, like the worst stomach cramps I've ever felt. Not a fun time. Zero out of 10 would not recommend. I also, and I think the majority of people also may have a digestive reaction to sugar alcohols. These tend to just cause like bloating this can sometimes be painful sometimes just more like uncomfortable and i definitely do feel like this if i have too much erythritol or any kind of sugar alcohol now built bars my favorite protein bar ever a lot of protein bars these days you're going to find sugar alcohol built bar has about six to seven grams and when i tried them for the first time i was like i don't know if i'm going to be able to eat these because i don't want to be getting bloated but i ate them and it was totally fine so for me i think my absolute max that i personally would want to consume and i I haven't really tested this out in, in too much detail, but I would say I wouldn't personally want to go above like 10 grams of sugar alcohol personally. So this is something you need to figure out. I had a client back when I was taking one-on-one -on -one clients, she was like, I found all of these snacks that are really great on calories and they taste so good, but I've been so, and then I think she was talking about something unrelated and she's like, but also I wanted to let you know, I've been feeling really bloated lately and I don't really know why. And I'm like, I can guarantee you there's sugar alcohol in those snacks you're having. And she checked and there was. And so she realized she just can't eat as much of those as she wants. She has to limit them. And like when I was making this whole list, there was this creator that I found on TikTok who was creating a like better for you boba tea drink. And I almost ordered them. And then I looked at the nutrition label and there's 14 grams of sugar alcohol in it. And I was like, girl, I was so excited, but I cannot, like, I don't think it's even worth me trying these. So it was a pass. But for me, like built bars and other protein bars that have sugar alcohol, totally fine for me. 10 grams and above is when I start getting a little iffy with those. So anyway, for those reasons, that's why I tend to lean towards and use natural sweeteners personally. And you'll see that in a lot of these recipes, but also a little bit of artificial sweeteners too. Liquid allulose is gonna be my number one and you'll see it in a lot of the recipes. I have never found this in a grocery store. I know some of you have, cause we've talked about it, but I did find the granulated version of allulose in the grocery store. So I bought this on Amazon. The one thing to keep in mind with any sweetener that you're buying is don't just look at the label and like trust what it says. Cause it says allulose on the front. You have to read the label and look at the ingredients specifically. This says, I don't know if you can see it, the only ingredient is allulose. Sometimes you can get a product that says allulose on the front, but it's a combination of allulose and like sucralose or something. So it's like a combination of a natural sweetener and an artificial sweetener. So just look out for that when you're potentially buying no or low calorie sweeteners. All right, so the first drink, we are talking about the slushy because it is the one I am most proud of, the one I'm most excited about, and it's a watermelon slushy. Now, I originally tried making a slushy, or I guess, you could also call it an icy. An icy is the one that you get at the like movie theater that is just like the perfect smooth like texture. I tried making it with just ice cubes and diet sprite and that did not go well. I think if you could freeze the diet sprite, that would work really great, but I don't have ice cube trays and I'm not gonna put a can of soda in the freezer because then how would I get it out? And also I have a tiny blender. So I have lots of limitations here, but then I had an epiphany. What if I froze chunks of watermelon and use that as like my ice cubes? That 
is the key. It's incredible. My husband tested every single one of these drinks. He's a tough critic. He's a tough critic. He compares everything that he drinks to the original, even though I'm like, this is not meant to be a perfect replica of the original. It's a lower calorie budget friendly version, but he insists on comparing it to the original. So he said this watermelon slushy icy thing that I made is close to a 10 out of 10. And I was like, what could make it a 10 out of 10? And he was like, I don't know, nothing. 10 out of 10 is unattainable. So you can't even, he's in his rating system, nothing on the planet could get a 10 out of 10. So this was the one he rated the highest as my biggest critic. So that was about 300 grams of frozen watermelon chunks and some diet Sprite to get the blender to blend it all up. So you've got, it's super sweet because that diet Sprite is really sweet. You could replace that with just like a sparkling water that has no calories and no extra sweeten sweetness because the watermelon is super sweet as is, but oh, the texture of the watermelon is what gives that slushy icy the exact texture that you would find in a gas station or a movie theater icy. So if you were to put 300 grams of frozen watermelon in here and use the diet Sprite or a sparkling water that didn't have any sweetness added, this would run you about 90 calories only. Some modifications that you could make would be, these are ones that I'm gonna try eventually. I have a bunch of cucumber. I've been wanting to also add cucumber in there for some extra like freshness. Just the watermelon cucumber combo, like unbeatable. I also think it would be good to add maybe a little bit of like Cool Whip if you wanted some creaminess in there. I don't know if that sounds weird to you guys, but I feel like that sounds pretty good. You could also add your alcohol of choice to make an adult slushy, and it would be incredible. I can't drink right now because of my health issues, so I couldn't try it, but I know it will be good. And my husband, that was his first thought. He's like, this would be so good if I added like tequila or something to it. So that's our first drink. Remember, you can find exact like quantities and, and ingredients in the description, or you can download the PDF, which I'll put a link to how to get that in the description at the top and also in the comments. And that will have like directions, exact quantities, and more nutrition information besides just the calories. Next up is an iced chai latte. Now, I am not a coffee drinker. I'm also very sensitive to caffeine. So the Starbucks ones are typically, like if I were to go to Starbucks, I would be getting an iced chai latte. But if I have an iced chai latte from Starbucks and an empty stomach, I literally get dizzy and overstimulated from the caffeine. And it's like 200 something calories and rather pricey for a little bit of liquid. So this was the first drink that I ever tried to replicate at home for less money and less calories. And I have tried so many chai teas in this recipe and there's only one, there's only one that has stood up. It maintains the spiciness that I'm looking for. I like a really spicy chai and it's this. Bengal Spice Celestial Seasonings Tea. It doesn't even say chai anywhere on here, but the ingredients are very chai, like cinnamon, roasted chicory, roasted carob, ginger, cardamom, black pepper, cloves, and nutmeg. It is so good. It's got this natural sweetness and that spiciness that I'm looking for, because what I noticed is that other chai teas, like they couldn't hold their flavor up to the milk that was added because the milk is a very strong flavor. No matter what milk you use, I used to use coconut milk. I've tried a bunch of different milks as well, but this is the only tea that could make this recipe just perfection. What I was looking for, very close replica to how it tastes at Starbucks. The way that I make it is gonna run you about 60 calories only compared to over 200 from Starbucks. And the other ingredients that I use in here are gonna be your milk of choice, my milk preference right now. It used to be coconut milk, now it's a lactose-free dairy milk. I also add some of that liquid allulose to add to the sweetness to kind of get it to that level that Starbucks has, which is a very sweet. And then you can also add like cinnamon or cardamom if you want extra spice. Again, my husband is my harshest critic and he did think that it was lacking some sweetness as compared to what you would get at Starbucks, but that's fine. I like it that way. Again, none of these are supposed to perfectly replace the originals, but for me, I would drink my version of this chai iced latte like any day over Starbucks. If I'm at Starbucks, am I gonna get it? Probably, like no big deal. By like giving you an alternative recipe to an iced chai latte, I'm not saying that the original is bad by any means. Like I, for sure, I'm still gonna have it. Like 
the actual one sometimes, but this is just a nice low calorie cost-effective way to have it on a more regular basis if you want to. I also really like this tea actually because it's caffeine free. So that's also why I prefer this over the Starbucks one because like my husband and I were walking around a, like a mallish area the other weekend and we stopped at Starbucks cause he is a Starbucks fangirl and I hadn't eaten enough. So I wasn't comfortable ordering the chai latte from them cause I didn't want to be like cracked out on caffeine and feel sick. So I had to get, I basically was just like, what tea do you have that doesn't have caffeine in it? They were like a, like a passion something something tea. And then I added some vanilla like syrup, some sugar-free vanilla syrup too. It's actually really good, but I just couldn't get the chai tea because I didn't want to get sick from the caffeine. Last thing I'll say about that is that I have found that Bengal spice tea in stores before, but I almost, I look every single time I go to the grocery store and I can never find it. So I get it on Amazon. But moving on to the next drink, which is a Thai tea latte, iced Thai tea latte. And my husband and I's first date was at a Thai restaurant. We absolutely love Thai food and we both love a good iced Thai tea latte. I have the same issue where the caffeine can sometimes make me feel sick, but usually the only time I'm having it is at the restaurant when I'm also eating a bunch of Thai food. So if I have caffeine with food, I'm usually okay, but still tons of calories, more expensive to get it at a restaurant. And I've figured out a combination of ingredients that for me totally satisfies any desire that I have for Thai tea lattes. And the key is getting a good base. And I use this Wang Derm Authentic Thai Tea. And so it comes in tea bags. This, this itself does have a little bit of calories, 13 calories per sachet but it is so freaking good. It, the second you open the box and smell it, you're gonna be like, holy crap, that smells exactly like Thai tea. It's so sweet and just, mm, I can't even explain it. I did also get this on Amazon. The way that I make it will run you about 53 calories if you follow my whole thing exactly, which will be in that PDF. But with this one and the chai, the iced chai latte, it's really just about figuring out your combination of like sweetness and like the actual flavor of the tea. And so I've experimented with using one tea bag, two tea bags, X amount of water, more water, less water, more sweetener, less sweetener, more milk, less milk. So that's kind of the key. And so I've figured out what I like the best and that's what's in the PDF. But if you don't want to download the recipe book, maybe you're against free stuff, just kidding. I just want to encourage you to actually kind of figure out what you like the best instead of just following what I've done. Exactly. So I've made this with this tea. My husband prefers only one tea bag of this because two tasted a little bit bitter, I think is what he said, because like the flavor is so strong. And I also used evaporated milk instead of condensed milk, which I think is what the, like a more traditional recipe would call for because evaporated milk isn't gonna have like a bunch of added sugar in it. And it still gives you that really like creamy, milky taste for not a lot of extra fluid, which allows the taste of this tea to really shine through. Like to get it to the sweetness level of what you would get in a restaurant, I had to use like double the amount of sweetener that I used like in the chai latte, especially to get it to my husband's standards to try to get as close as I could to what you would get at a restaurant. So again, play around with the quantities of things, but this tea, evaporated milk, liquid allulose. Killer, super delicious, calorie friendly version of a Thai tea latte, iced Thai tea latte. Next up is one of my more recent discoveries and I have it at least once a week because I love boba. It is so good, I just love it so much. But boba can run you a lot of calories, like 400, 500 calories sometimes I think. I tend to just not look because I don't want to know. Like if I'm going to have boba from a restaurant, like just don't tell me, you know, and don't ruin this for me. But I was like, if I want to have it more regularly, I want to come up with maybe a more friendly recipe for what my goals are. So I get everything from my protein boba at Costco, but I've also linked alternatives that I found on Amazon that could work just as well, I think. But it's this Boba Bam Instant Boba Pack. This brown sugar boba, it's frozen. So each pack, it's like this little frozen thing. You put it in the microwave, it melts and like warms up everything so that it's like a syrup with the warm boba pearls. And then it gives you a little boba straw. And this on its own, you're supposed to just add milk to this and you're good to go. And I do do that sometimes. So each pack is 110 calories, which not that bad. Like that's incredible if I get to have boba once a week. But in order to make it less of like a sugary bomb, I like to add these that I also get at Costco, these Fairlife salted caramel 
protein drinks. It's 30 grams of protein for this whole thing. So I combine them together instead of using regular milk. And that gives me my delicious salted caramel brown sugar protein boba. It is so freaking good. Sometimes I do just use regular milk though. So don't feel like you have to add like protein. Fairlife also has lots of other flavors of these types of drinks. They have like chocolate. So if you want to do like a chocolate brown sugar, that would probably be really good. You could also create your own, like just use whatever protein powder you have that you think would be a good combo with this brown sugar boba pack. You could even do the protein, add ice if you like more of the like milkshakey smoothie style bobas instead of like the liquid. You could combine this with the Thai tea recipe. Actually, I don't know if brown sugar and Thai tea would be good, but maybe if you kind of like, you could also just buy the boba pearls on their own that doesn't have all the syrup and everything added and just really create your own thing. So. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm really excited about this and the idea of being able to make boba at home. So this and this combined is gonna be 260 calories and 30 grams of protein. So this is 110, this is 150 calories. So if you were to use regular milk, it will be fewer calories. So if that's kind of what you're going for, go with that. For me personally, any chance that I can get to get extra protein in, I'm gonna take it. I just ran out of storage on my phone. So I had to upload the clip that I was just filming to my computer and then delete it on my phone, took a second. But if we're at a slightly different angle, if anything looks off, that's why. But anyway, the protein boba, my all time favorite. I think I said everything I have to say about that. Moving on, we've got two more drinks. The next one, I feel like I say all of these are my favorite, but I genuinely like every single one of these, except the last one. The last one's not my fave, but I wanted to include it anyway, but we'll get there when we get there. The root beer float. I, root beer, my all time favorite, soda. When I was a kid, we would go down to this restaurant called the Harbor House when I lived in Hawaii. My dad built boats, and so he was always down at the harbor. And they would make these root beer floats in these like ice cold like schooner glasses that they would use like for the beer, but they would make root beer floats in it. It's like one of my favorite memories, very nostalgic. Love a good root beer float. And this one, the way that I make it is 105 calories. You are gonna need a diet soda. I just use a regular diet soda, whatever our grocery store had, but you could also use Zevia. Zevia is one of my favorites because it's soda that's sweetened with stevia. So I don't get that artificial sweetener action going on. I also really, really like the Olipop root beer. It's really good. So if you didn't wanna do the artificial sweeteners in a regular diet soda, you could do Ziva or Olipop because they're sweetened with more natural stuff. And then you can just just use your vanilla ice cream of choice. My all time favorite top pick of ice cream is Dryer's Slow Churned. And I'm so sad because HEB here in Austin does not carry Dryer's Slow Churned. At least I haven't found it at the HEB that we go to. Dryer's Slow Churned ice cream, especially vanilla, certain flavors are gonna be incredibly close to the calories and macros of Halo Top. And Halo Top, it's like just as expensive to get a tiny little pint of Halo Top compared to an entire big thing of Dryer's Slow Churned. So again, I'm frugal. We love the money saving angle if you are really into Halo Top and you want to spend the money on that, cool. If you don't want to stress about how many calories are coming from your ice cream and your root beer float, then just get whatever vanilla ice cream you want. That's totally valid too. But I calculated the calories for this using Dryer's Slow Churned, a half of a cup, which used to be one serving of ice cream. Like anytime I ever looked at a serving of ice cream on any ice cream label, it always said a half of a cup. And now every time I look at an ice cream label, the serving says two thirds. And like, I'm for that. I am for having more realistic serving sizes on nutrition labels, but it's just something I noticed. As somebody who used to calorie track and macro track a lot, I've just noticed that change. But again, I'm here for it. So also use more than a half a cup of ice cream if you want to, you do your thing. Okay, and the very last drink I mentioned, this one is actually not my favorite. I almost didn't include it, but I, I just felt like I should at least mention it in case any of you guys would like it, or if you're curious about it. This was also the one that my husband hated the most. Also, wait a second though, we need to question his taste because, okay, he's from Spain. He never, like never had root beer until he met me. Actually, I don't know if he'd had root beer before. I know he didn't like it. And when we first started dating, I was like, you need to try a root beer float because the love my root beer floats. He tried it and he dead ass looked at my face and said, this would be really good with Mountain Dew. Huh? Huh? Mountain Dew and vanilla ice cream? Get out of here, you psychopath. I will never recover from that. I can't believe I married him. And now he actually likes root beer. Anytime I buy diet root beer, he's like, I have to stop him from drinking all of it. But I agree with his taste about not liking this last drink that much. I'm also gonna roast him just a little bit more. But it is a protein pink lemonade using 
iso pure what are they calling this infusions and they have a bunch of different flavors i got the citrus lemonade i think part of the reason i don't like it is because of this flavor if i had gotten i think they had like a tropical punch they had like a watermelon something i think like a mango something i definitely think i would prefer one of the other flavors but i bought this and i'm not gonna waste it so i'm gonna make the best out of it and that's what this drink is i bought this because i saw it going around on tiktok and i was like lemonade but protein that sounds really good but here's the thing so the reason I don't like this, I'm really sensitive to bitter taste. This tastes bitter, and I think it's like the citrus in the citrus lemonade, which is why I think I would like a different flavor better. But the thing about this, and I think it will be true for every single flavor, is it has a very distinct aftertaste. To me, it tastes like a vit like an emergency packet. If you've ever had emergency, that powder, it has that same taste, like aftertaste going on. It's not horrible, but it's definitely not what I, like I would definitely not have that if I could pick, if I could choose to not have it taste like that. So I can't like fully recommend this and it's included in the PDF download, but I say in the notes of that page, like I don't actually like it that much, but try it out if you feel like you want to. If you don't mind that more like emergency, like airborne, kind of fizzy something kind of taste that's what's going on here my husband said it reminds him of a medicine that he took when he was a kid that he hated so that's why he doesn't like it but also just this last thing i'm gonna roast him for he likes the taste of liquid dayquil it just, <sighs> i can't i just can't i can't believe it it just so um, take that. Maybe you no longer want to listen to any of the feedback that he gave on any of these drinks because he's so weird with his taste. But in order to get this to a pink lemonade, I do include, I squirt in some watermelon strawberry Mio in here to give it the pink color and that extra yummy sweet taste to help kind of cover up the bitterness. And the emergency vibes. I also don't do a full scoop. So the serving size is one whole scoop. That would give you 20 grams of protein. I do 12 ounces of water and half of a scoop to also help it be less bitter and like a little bit more palatable. So that's what I'll say about this. It's included in the PDF. It's included in this video. I'll link it if you want to try it. But personally, especially if you're sensitive to bitter, I wouldn't get the citrus lemonade flavor. But if, and if you don't like that emergency taste, like don't, just don't get it. I just included it because the idea of protein in a lemonade like that's so refreshing and delicious like it's one of those things like have you ever been in a relationship and you liked them more for the potential than who they actually were that's what this is basically so take what you will from this anyway that's all the drinks it's the end of the video don't forget to download that pdf if you want to actually have these recipes like super easy to check out also check out the description if you're not a downloadable pdf kind of gal i've linked a lot of these products that you probably can't find in the grocery store. But again, like also don't feel like you need to drink any of these drinks. Feel free to try them. If you try them, please tag me on Instagram. Like if you post it on Instagram and tag me, I would absolutely love to see it. It would like warm my heart to see you guys drinking the drinks that I came up with. But I also wanna encourage you to just have fun. Your diet doesn't have to be horrible. Get creative, like in, just enjoy, especially this summer. All of these drinks also give me like summery vibes, which is why I wanted to post it this month. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe here. You can also follow me on TikTok and on Instagram, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.